What's up, MHS? We're here with the second episode of the Woolly Network. Uh, today we've got a very special guest. Um, I'm Joey Bean. This is my co-host, Ryan Foley. Um, he's a graduate from Millbury High School, graduated in 2016. Uh, he played Division One baseball at Bryant University and was drafted by the Los Angeles Dodgers in 2019. He is the first player to be drafted into the MLB from Millbury High. Please welcome Brian Ward. Ryan, how's it going? It's going great. How are you guys? Good, good. Thanks for coming on. Uh, no so, Thanks for having me. Yeah, so um, what, have you been, what have you been up to lately? Uh, baseball starting up soon, so what have you been doing? Yeah, you know, uh, right now I'm still, I came home from spring training last year because of uh, COVID, so we got shut down. We didn't get into the season, but I've been at home. I've been working with my dad for the uh, town parks department. Um, been getting in lifts when I can, going to cages all the time, working out, just trying to stay in the best shape that I can. Um, waiting for the call to report to this year's spring training. Yeah, definitely. I think that you're in the same boat as uh, a couple other of the uh, players just waiting for the call. Uh, so let me get into the first question. So uh, you played in Millbury. You played baseball in Millbury um, every year growing up, working your way up from Little League to varsity. Uh, what did your childhood years of playing Millbury baseball look like uh, before going to college? You know, I mean, playing in Millbury was awesome. I, I was able to play with all my friends, like all the way from Little League all the way up into high school. Junior varsity, varsity baseball, it was it was a blast. Um, just being able to hang out with them and get to play with them and have fun, talk about it in school, look forward to things in school, all the way up through it. So that was a really good time for us. Yeah, you got um, So more in high school, what were some like big accomplishments for you that you um that you had done? Big accomplishments? I mean, as a team, like our accomplishment always was to make the playoffs. That's what we always wanted to do. And Millbury, um, we were able to do it a couple of years. Granted, we came up short when we did make the playoffs every year, but but yeah, no, just like being able to play in the playoff atmosphere was huge for us. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so I want to ask, uh, so during your senior year, uh, what did your recruiting process look like? Um, what were some of the schools looking at you, and uh, what were some of your favorites, and ultimately uh, what led you made the decision to go to Bryant? Yeah, no, so the recruiting process actually happened more in my sophomore. I committed as a junior, so it was more my sophomore year into my junior year but you know it was it was an interesting process i was kind of playing in like some showcase games um, like bay state games stuff like that around the area I was getting attention from colleges sending out video to people and you know it, it kind of got overwhelming for a little bit there was a lot of people reaching out like you didn't really know what to go on and with the college recruiting process it's like there's a lot of like gray areas where like you're not allowed to talk to coaches during certain months or like then you can be an email only and then you can be in person. So it's like very confusing as to what's going on during that. But you know, all the coaches were very helpful. They explained everything. Um, but going to Bryant became an easy choice. As soon as I went there, I met Coach O, I met the staff. Um, I fell in love with the campus. I fell in love with the coaching staff. I mean, I still talk to my coaches from Bryant basically every day, like we're in strong touch, I play video games with one of them like we're really close so going to Brown was like the best decision I made and I knew as soon as I left campus on my visit that that's where I was going to end up going. Huh? Uh, so now after three years of playing college ball you entered the MLB draft what was the process of um, preparing for the, for the pros and what was the experience? Oh yeah preparing for the pros was fun man I mean granted you never know. Like so, like I was doing interviews while I was at Bryant um, my junior year with all the teams. And, like there was a bunch of kids on my team that were doing them too. Like different scouts for different teams were coming in. We'd go into a one-on-one -on -one meeting. You'd answer their questions, take some tests, like do all that stuff, just like normal. Like keep in touch with them as the season goes on. But, like I said, like you never really know what was gonna happen. So, but the the process was awesome. I mean, it was really cool. Some of the questions they ask you, it's like. I don't know the answer to that. Like, is there a right answer? So it was it was an interesting process to learn about as I went through it. Yeah, what did your uh, draft day look like? What were you doing? Were you at home? Um, you know, how'd you keep calm and just, uh, yeah, how did it go? Yeah, so draft day was interesting. So I didn't, so there's three days the MLB draft. Obviously, like day one is round one. Yep. Day two is rounds two to 10. 
and then day three is the rest of the round. So I didn't know if I was going. I didn't know when I was going. So like I didn't want to have like this big party, say on Monday, and not yeah. get drafted, yeah. and then get drafted Tuesday, and like the party like all day we were just kind of there. So like I didn't want to do anything. <laughs> Uh, my family came over. I wanted to personally go out and be on a golf course, but I thought, like, you know, like, my close family, my immediate family is going to want to be be a part of this. So, like, I had them over, and it was literally me, my sisters, my dad, my mom, my grandma, my aunt, and, like, we just hung out at the house all day. It was a roller coaster of, of emotions, now I can tell you that. Like, starting the day, like, it's going to happen today, and then halfway through the day being like, you know what? Never mind. It's not going to happen today. Like, I'm not sure. And then ultimately it happened that day, which was really awesome. Yeah, so that phone call, getting that, what was that like, you know, uh, did you get like an area code to where you found out or how'd you, did they just let you know right on the call? How'd you find out? Yeah, so, um, so I was, we were watching it on live stream because it happened on day two. So like there's a live stream on MLB where like they have like announcers and stuff talking about it. And yep. so we're sitting there watching and like I've been in touch with my agents throughout the day, like talking about what was going on with teams. And my buddy from Bryant shoots me a text and goes, Hey, congrats, buddy. And I was like, what are you, what are you talking about? Cause like, so like we were streaming it. So obviously we were a little bit behind and like we had all the Twitter stuff off. Like no one called me. My buddy just texted me and said, Hey, congrats. I was like, what are you talking about? And he texted me back. He goes, the Dodgers, bro. And like, I look up on TV and LA was on the clock oh, and uh, my name got called right there. They called me right after they picked me. It was, I can't even explain. Like it was like the most absurd moment ever. It was crazy. Yeah. That sounds sick. Uh, so yeah, let me ask you this. So um, obviously in uh, 2019, uh, you played for the rookie ball for the Ogden Raptors. Raptors. Um, so how was your first taste of the minor leagues? Like uh, some of the details, like the road trips, uh, rooming, and like was it what you expected, or is it anything different? Yeah, you know, like I always heard, everyone always said, like when I talked to about minor league baseball, they say it's a grind. Like yeah. minor, league, minor league baseball's a grind. Like you gotta love it. You gotta want to do it, and I was like, you know, like, like it can't be that bad. Like, I, like I want to play professional baseball, so I showed up. <laughs> Luckily, I got drafted with another teammate of mine, uh, Jimmy Titus. So we ended up going to the same team together. So it was nice, like we were both in Utah together rather than being completely alone. Um, but we got put into a host family house. Yep. So some people who lived in the area of Ogden, like we lived in their house with them, which was it's it's that's an adjustment at first. Like you walk into someone's home, they're like, yeah, like this house is yours, like go in the kitchen and stuff. And that takes a little bit to get yeah, used to, but, but with travel, oh, dude, travel, man. I mean, there's no plane ride. So like bus. you're, you're in a, you're on a bus for 16 hours plus sometimes just driving through the night, driving through the day. I mean, and there's no, there's no room on that bus. Like you don't get a single seat to yourself. You're doubled up with someone. So if you get that window seat, it's going to be a tight ride for 16 hours, but it, it, it takes a grind. I mean, especially when you play, you play four days in a row and then you get to go get cramped up on a bus for 16 hours to head back home, sleep for four hours and then go back to the field the next day for a game. But I mean, like they said, like if you love it, it's worth it, but it's a grind, man. Yeah, I think that's the end of everybody's story and that's just crazy. I can't imagine that. But um, so let me ask you, uh, so you played uh, baseball at almost every level. Uh, what do the gaps in between the levels of play look like from a talent standpoint? So. Um, like what leap is the biggest difference high school to college college to pros what do you think oh that's a tough question honestly i'm gonna say i'd have to say college to pros like just just the fact that like every guy that i'm seeing on the mound is like if you, he's throwing 93 miles an hour plus like everyone's just bringing the heat with a lot more movement a lot more control like just that and like the speed of the game is incredible like yeah playing, playing defense like if someone's on base like all of a sudden like the game speeds up on you so fast as to what's going on so i think that jump like that learning curve was was a really big adjustment um for me when i got there yeah um so now for all the younger uh baseball players watching what's some advice that you would give them advice that's a good one well i mean everyone always told me this like growing up, this is advice that they're gonna hear all the time, but like school, if you wanna continue playing baseball, school is extremely important. I mean, the first thing that a college or someone's gonna to say to you if they're looking into you is like, you gotta send us your transcripts. Like we gotta make sure that you can get in here into our school before we can even start this recruiting process. That's a huge thing. And the other thing is like, if you wanna play baseball, like the only person that's gonna stop you from getting there is you. Like if you want it, go get it, work on it. People are always around to help. Like. I know that Coach Vestry, Coach Vestry helped me a ton in Millbury. Um, Coach Donahue, I know he's in and out right now, but 
it just there's always going to be people around that are willing to help um, put in work and like you'll get it if you want to work for it. All right, uh, you mentioned the legend's name, Coach Silvestri. So uh, you've got to give us give us your favorite Coach Silvestri moment or story. Coach Silvestri, oh, we had an early practice one day, <laughs> early in the morning. Uh, we all showed up. It was cold. I remember it was freezing. No one really wanted to be there. It was, I mean, it was early in the morning, and we showed up. And about 15, 20 minutes into practice, Coach called practice. Uh, his, <laughs> his dog had jumped the fence, and the cops had to come get it and basically his dog was in jail so he had to cancel practice to go get his dog out of jail that was that was probably the most all-time oh, moment yeah. that happened in high school baseball with him that's wild i mean yeah chris Silvestri, he's uh he's one of the most famous in nobody that's for sure <laughs> all right ryan uh we really appreciate you joining us um yeah thanks a lot appreciate it thank you so much yeah, no problem Good luck. thank you guys all right Good thank you